Hallelujah. 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 Baby seated. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever we have, whatever we are going to receive today and every day of our lives, it is from Him alone. Nobody else. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So whatever you expect, you know where it's coming from. Hallelujah. The Lamb upon the throne. Hallelujah. He's our source. He's our foundation. He's our everything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that all our treasures come from him? Hallelujah. Nowhere else. Hallelujah. When all these places run bankrupt. Hallelujah. We know and we are convinced that we will flourish and flourish and flourish because his resources are our resources. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And I'm telling you, hallelujah. Today is your day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you convinced about that? Today is your day. Say that to yourself. Say, today is my day. Today is my day. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you. There are moments in life, there are stages in life, where a stage, a certain stage of your life, seems to be prolonged so much that you think you're going to remain like that forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I've come to tell you that is not the case. Hallelujah. Certain stages might appear to be prolonged so much that you begin to identify yourself with that stage or to that stage. And you think you will never have any other life different from the one that you are experiencing. You think your life has gotten stagnated. You think that is your level and that is it. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, stages of your life are way beyond increasing your salary from 1 million to 1.5. That's still the same stage. When a stage changes, things happen spectacularly, dramatically. I'm telling you. And you know that this one here is different now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Imagine the caterpillar. And then all of a sudden he thinks and he identifies as a caterpillar. And he thinks that's his stage, that's his life. All of a sudden, wings start to spring. Wings start to grow. Hallelujah. And then it starts flying. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you. For as long as you're exposed to the life of God, to the workings of His Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. You will not remain on that level. You will not remain on that stage. You are changing. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When a state changes, everything in your life changes. You were a caterpillar and now you're a butterfly. Now you are flying. Hallelujah. It's not just, you know, these small, small changes. Small, small benefits. All those things. No, 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 no. Something happens and your life indeed changes. Hallelujah. What you used to eat, how you used to eat. How you used to drive. 
Hallelujah. Or oh, what you used to drive. <laughs> Glory to God. Where you used to stay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything takes another level. I'm telling you. Whatever you are identifying with, and you've been identifying with for the past year and some of you years also, let me tell you, a stage is changing. A stage is changing. A stage is changing. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you. You know, people get used to you on some level. Hallelujah. And when you talk the way you talk and the way you've been talking, some of them even start to mock, start to scoff at you. But something is happening. I'm telling you. And let me tell you. Never let the scoffers and the mockers get to you. Never let that happen. You know that something is brewing. You know that something is happening. You know that a transformation is coming. You know it. Some of the most useless people are people who criticize and taunt. People who are getting somewhere, who are trying to get somewhere. Hallelujah. Have you seen a person who's you? Okay, let me not say useless. I don't know what word to use. Eh? You will get it. Eh? Like my new fans. Eh? Hallelujah. You are eighth and you're mocking someone who is second. <laughs> Very confusing. Hallelujah. You know, someone is second and you're eighth and you're mocking the one who is second. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you know, there's nothing as confusing as my new fans. <laughs> but let's go somewhere else. Eh? You know, one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One is ambitious enough. And let me tell you, when people taunt you, it's because they're afraid of you. They're afraid of you. And they're afraid you might make it. Hallelujah. So give no ear. I'm telling you. Give no ear to any anyone trying to put you down. Something is happening. Something is happening. For as long as you're exposed to Zoe, I'm telling you, something is happening. You're not exposed to Zoe in vain. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's impossible for that to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So things are changing. Things are changing. Hallelujah. Paul the Apostle said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said, I'm not ashamed of it. Hallelujah. Then he said, because it is the power. The power. He said, I am not ashamed of it. You know why? Because in this day and age, in the day of secularism, where empirical knowledge is exalted and made God. Very few Christians who are exposed to those higher echelons of life and academics and positions and politics would want to associate themselves with the power of the gospel. So they will distance themselves. And they will call you, and they will call us in secret and say, can you pray for me? But they can't associate. But they know where the power is. Now, Paul the Apostle said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because you see, it pleased God through the preaching of the gospel to save them that believe, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, it says it pleased God that through the preaching, hallelujah, he said it pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching. Because you see, now you're seated here 
and a lot is happening to you just by this exposure. A lot is already happening. And people don't know and they will not realize what is that that has taken you from A to Z instantly. What is that? Because you see, you can't put a finger to it empirically. You can't. He said, it pleased God. And that's why at some point, Jesus laughed and said, ha, 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 you know. Thank you because you've hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and revealed them unto the simple. He said, it pleased God by the foolishness because in their eyes, in their eyes, it appears foolish to come here and you are told, rise up and be lifted up. And then something happens to you and all of a sudden your office things start to shake, 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 shake and then you start rising up. He says it is foolish. To those who are in that world, it is by manipulations and this and that and that and that and go and get yourself this and that and and all kinds of accolades and he says, but (laughs) it pleased God that you would come here And when you sit here, something that appears foolish to them would be done to you and would save your life and would be destroyed, hallelujah, just like that. And so he says, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, I am not ashamed. The people who are ashamed to associate themselves with everything gospel. And they feel proud to associate themselves with everything that the world esteems. That the secular world esteems. In the church, some church folks actually are ashamed. And let me tell you, everything that is being done today is done to demean the glory of the gospel. And so that is why answers like, how have you made it? It is by the Lord. The answers like those, by the blessing of the Lord, they, they, they want to discredit it by all means. Everything that is being done, everything, whether it's in the media or policies, everything, it is geared towards discrediting the power of the gospel. Because you know what is happening? There's a war going on between darkness and light. Hallelujah. And never forget that. You may think you're sophisticated, too sophisticated, but let me tell you, you're on the side of that fellow, that ancient dragon, that the same fellows that are ignorant worship, and you worship that same dragon in your academics. Let me tell you, Hallelujah. It's only another version of him that shows up. Let me tell you, there's nothing, there's nothing in manifestation, in operation that is not either on the side of light or on the side of darkness. And this is one thing. He says, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Your public display of the gospel your public association with the gospel prophets. There is power in it. You know this undercover stuff. Matthew chapter 10 verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before fellow remnants. It says, whosoever shall confess me before men. Your public display, your public association with the gospel profits much. He says, if you confess and you're put on the spot, whether you're put on the spot or not, and you say, it is by God's grace that I am what I am. Don't give credit to those fake, foolish things. Says by his grace. God is looking for people like those who will not be ashamed of him. He says, if you shall confess me before men, him will I confess also. You see how it works? 
Then if you say it's the blessing out there, the blessing will work for you here. If you want a private blessing, then confess him privately. Eh? But if you want a blessing that people will see, that is... Then hallelujah! Confess him! Publicly! I'm telling you! And some of you will continue being blessed privately. Eh? <laughs> but there's a time when he blesses you and your enemies see it. He says he prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Now if you want him to bless you and everyone notices it. He says make him known. Let everyone notice where your staff is coming from. Hallelujah. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. It is plain and simple. You only need the Greek to confuse you. Eh? That's how it works. For you being radical about this. And not mixing it with any other stuff. How come you're healthy? I know where I got it from. Eh? How come you're wealthy? I know. Everything that I am. From him and him alone. Him and him alone. Hallelujah. Nowhere else. Hallelujah. 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 So the apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. That's what he did. Everywhere, he attributed all that he is, all that he was to the gospel. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He says, because you see, I cannot say education is the power. I can't say politics is the power. There's something that is the power. The power. The power. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. Whether you're in edu education or politics, there's something underneath that is the power that can propel you beyond any other power. Hallelujah. And it is found here. It's found through the foolishness of preaching. And the world is yet to see the full-blown benefits of the gospel. I'm telling you. The full-blown benefits. Because that's what we are all about. Hallelujah. Do you know where the source of power is here? Nowhere else. Not in Hollywood producers, World Health Organizations, IMF, and let me tell you, if the governments of this world only knew it, they would straighten themselves. Let me tell you, the power, the power is here. The power unto salvation. The power that we have here can salvage an entire nation, the entire globe, I'm telling you. It says it's the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. He says to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So you're seated here knowing that whatever has been disturbing you shall cease to disturb you today. Hallelujah. You acknowledge that and you mean business with it. Eh? Hallelujah. This is where we get it. Hallelujah. For therein, verse 17, is the righteousness of God revealed. It says, for therein is the righteousness of God 
the right order of things as they ought to be. And so while outside it appears like we are in a third world nation, we have a revelation that we are more than first world. Because there's a revelation we have received from God. That we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. So we are not letting these labels that have been given and have been imputed globally to affect us. There's a way we see things. While they say extravagance is something that is not right. The revelation of God says, no, 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 no. He's a God of more than enough, more than enough, more than enough, more than enough. Hallelujah. So when we see something, when we see a man with one house, we say, that's not righteous. And it ought not to be like that. Hallelujah. So we are not going to take socialistic ideas, communistic ideas. All these things are fake, fake. We know the righteousness of God, how things are, or how things ought to be. It says the revelation of how things ought to be. We know it. We are not going to let ourselves be deceived by the world. And so we refuse to give in to the way they expect third world people to be. Because we are not third world. We are not. So we refuse all those things. We refuse, refuse. There is a place we are going to. From glory to glory to glory. It will defy everything that the economists, the globalists think. Hallelujah. And so we are different. We are a peculiar nation. Hallelujah. Very different. So we are defying so many things. So we are not going to accept just because certain statistics. Certain statistics are the same about certain people. And then we think you're part of it. We, we are not. We are not. We refuse. If people refuse to die, we refuse to die. If people refuse to fall sick, we will refuse to fall sick. We will refuse because therein is the righteousness of God revealed. We are not going to let man to tell us or the devil to tell us who we are or what we are. Our expectation comes from the righteousness of God. Anything other than that is wickedness. And we refuse it. We reject it. It's not a part of us. We are not a part of it. We know who we are. Hallelujah. So when someone mistreats you, feel sorry for them. Eh? Hallelujah. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. It says, this is our bread and butter. Nothing else. This is our living. When someone starts touching our faith, he's touching our living. So don't look at all those things. Those things that God has given to you. Credentials, degrees, accolades, connections. Those are things that God has just given to you. But there's something underneath all those things that we live by. And when it is affected, every other thing is affected. None of these things are fake in themselves. If you're set up rightly. But don't let those someone convince you that that is your living. So when they are touching it, they are touching your living. No, 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 no. Your faith. Is your living. That's when they start encroaching on it. That's when you should wake up and fight and refuse. Refuse and fight to the end. Let me tell you. When it comes to touching our faith, that one there, that one, there is no compromise about it. You know, some of these people think that they'll just Put up a law and then somehow we will. Oh, if it is. Who will obey pieces of papers? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you. When it comes to what Jesus himself has said. 
about us, about our kingdom. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. That settles it. So you can do all you want to do. We know where we belong. And you will, we shall not for a single moment. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why worry about nothing, nothing, nothing. Hallelujah. Nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They just shall live by faith. They just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth. Now let me tell you, if you think that anyone can have an agenda to suppress the truth and somehow get away with it, then the God we are talking about is not this God, the God of the Bible. But as long as the God of the Bible is the God of the Bible, there is wrath that comes out when men try to suppress the truth. Wrath, not theoretical wrath. Wrath, hallelujah. It comes out. He says they suppress it in unrighteousness, in things that are not lined up with the faith. And let me tell you, the faith rules supreme. It's way above every constitution, every law. In the world, the faith is supreme. And if you're somewhere and the place, the constitution of that place suppresses the truth, let me tell you, the faith is supreme over every constitution. I'm telling you. Now, men better line their constitution with the faith. Because if they don't, it will explode. I am telling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. It says, for God has showed it unto them. You know, it is not for the lack of evidence. It is stubbornness. Hallelujah. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it to them. Verse 20. For the visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So that they are without excuse. Verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And this has happened over and over and over and over again. He said, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Not that they did not know. The people who tried to explain him away or undermine God, it's not that they do not know him. It's just they just are on another, they've just taken a certain side. And you can do whatever you want to do. These fellows are not going to change. There's a time when Jesus had just risen from the dead. And then certain men gathered. Certain religious men gathered and said, ha, So now what shall we do? You would think that these people, in all their run-ins with Jesus, 
they didn't actually believe him. And now that they have known that he has actually risen, they are going to believe him. But that should show you that they were not there to believe him. They were on a certain side and Jesus was on the certain side. No matter what he would do or he did, they had just taken a stand, they had taken a side. And so they came together and said, ha. when the soldiers reported to the council, they came and said, ha. now this one here is going to convince people. <laughs> so what should we do? Let us pay the bloggers to write stories Hallelujah. That will discredit this and say his disciples actually stole his body. Hallelujah. That's in Matthew. He said, let us pay this man money and go and make up a story that they actually came and stole his body. Hallelujah. Do you know what happened? The soldiers took the money and went and started spread, spreading that same story. And the scripture says in Matthew that up to this day, that same rumor still stands to show you that people are not interested in truth. A lie spreads faster than the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now let me tell you, these are men these are men who had the evidence of the resurrection right before them. And they just did not want to believe. They just didn't want to take that side. There are people who have taken a stand. It's either light or darkness and have taken a stand of darkness. And don't, don't, you know, don't bother yourself with those. Hallelujah. Don't. You have nothing to do with those. If they have taken that stand. Hallelujah. Someone came to me years ago. And was telling me. Oh. Do you know. Uh, those guys were saying. That you know. <laughs> you know we're, just, we're carrying out a healing service somewhere. So yeah. But even if you heal the people. After some years. They will die still. Everyone is going to die. <laughs> now these were religious people. We'd gone somewhere and were so messed up by my presence there because of what we were doing. And they couldn't stand the evidence and so what they came up with is, so, you know, you're healing people, but again, they will fall sick and then they will die again. Then I looked at this guy who came. And then I told him, you go and follow them then, eh? You know, you've, you've, got to, you've got to rebuke the mouthpiece of unbelief as well. Eh? You know better. So why are you saying, oh, these people are saying for you, you know better. Why are you the mouthpiece of them? Jesus told Satan, get behind me, Satan, when he had become a mouthpiece of Satan. And let me tell you, because you see, Unbelief is a spirit. When you tolerate it and you go, oh, they're saying that, oh, you know, it's a spirit, it will infect you. Just like faith is a spirit, the scripture says, we having the same spirit of faith. Unbelief is a spirit. When it comes and whether it's coming through a remnant saying, oh, did you hear the people saying, who so are you, their mouthpiece? Good is doing something and you're saying the people are saying. Rebuke it. Whether it's a remnant, rebuke it. I'm telling you. We have no time for what people are saying, devils are saying. We only have time for what God is doing, God is saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's not let our, 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 our faith be contaminated. Ooh, you know, so, so what? You know better. Hallelujah. And if you don't deal with it, sooner or later it will deal with you. It's infectious. It is a spirit. Don't, don't just tolerate it and hang around it. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you. And it creeps in. It creeps in. Through ways and in ways that 
sometimes can go unrecognized and has crept into the whole church and using very subtle messagings. Oh, you see, ah, uh, you go there. Okay, they call you by name. Don't you know your name? You've heard those things? When Jesus picked up Nathanael's name prophetically, did Nathanael know that he's called Nathanael? But you see, this is the same spirit. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They're trying to find ways to undermine God. When Jesus met that woman and told her, you had been with multiple men. Didn't she know that she was with multiple men? But you see now for her, because she glorified him as God, that knowledge. Because she, she ran around saying, come and see a man that told me all about myself. But when you hear those words, and whether they are coming from pastors, apostles, evangelists, rebuke them. I'm telling you, don't stand anything that is going to dent your faith. Nathaniel, after he acknowledges that he has picked up his name prophetically and is excited, Jesus says, now the heavens will open. That's what happens when you're in that flow. That's what happens. And so, that is what the enemy is targeting. To let these things creep in and creep in. And as long as he can make you not glorify God as God, then all of a sudden, you're gone. You start giving credit to the empirical because everything that is God-like will diminish. Because that when they knew God, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They tried to find excuses and reasons to undermine God. Show me that person and I'll show you a person who is void of the manifest presence of God in their lives. And then show me one person who everything about God, every manifestation, they will gather it and glorify it and fan it into flame. And then I'll show you one who is catching on who is cultivating something. Hallelujah. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain. It says, in their imagination. It says, and their foolish heart was darkened. So you get to the place where now everything is dark. That, that's where that path leads to. And the things that you once knew and saw, you can no longer see. That is the delicacy of the spiritual realm. That at some point, things can be so clear and vivid and you're on the brink of actual apparitions in, this, in the physical of these spiritual things. But before then, Things are vivid. You may not yet be seeing their manifestation physically, but you can see clearly. Hallelujah. There are outlines, and it's so clear to you, and you're so convinced and persuaded. And then you let your mind wander. You let someone grab your mind, and you let it wander. And you jump on CNN, and you jump on these secular channels, and you jump, on, and they, they bring a narrative, and all of a sudden, you're gone, you're gone, you're swayed. You are away. And the things that you used to see clearly, you used to see that when you would come here, if you would just step on this ground, everything would be well. But now you're staying home and you cannot see the importance and the value of sitting here. Do you know that seat where you are, how valuable it is? Now a lot of you see it. But when you take that road, you can get to a place where things stop to mean anything. It says their foolish heart was darkened. Hallelujah. It says, professing themselves to be wise. It says, they became fools. They became fools, fools, fools. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God unto an image like unto corruptible man. Now, in other words, 
They immortalized everything that was immortal. They, they put reason to everything that was godly. And that's what the enemy is about. I watched a documentary on the History Channel where they were saying, oh, you see that the Red Sea, you know, where the Egyptian drowned, you know, there's a certain red color that comes during a certain time, and so that wasn't Moses, the blood, and you know, when the fish die and the frogs die, it's obvious that flies will come out from there, and, and, and then, and then, Here is God, one of the greatest displays of God's power. And they're trying to change the glory of the un uncorruptible God to an image made like corruptible man. All of a sudden, the power of the revelation of God, away. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, let me tell you, these things are so important for us. They're so important to us. To hold so dear, to guard them so jealously. Don't let anything infringe on them. Don't let anything. Treasure it. Guard it like you would guard your gold, your treasure. It is much more valuable. Much more valuable. Don't let anything penetrate you. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God and to an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and forth with the beast and creeping things. Now let me tell you, it says that is the cause. And then there's a, this other cause where you glorify and magnify everything. Everything that is happening. Everything that God is about. John chapter 9, let's read so fast. John chapter 9, verse 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, your life is a miracle. Your life, as you know it, everything that is happening to you, that is going to keep happening to you in progressive levels, is going to be by God and God alone, by His hand. His hand alone. You will look to nowhere else but Him. And He will show you that you need nothing else but Him. That's why you need to know these things. Why is your future bright? Because of Him. Why do you think you're not going to be wasted away? Because of Him. But you don't understand me. I somehow don't measure up. Let me tell you. God, you know the first person God has dealt with. So you don't surprise him. He dealt with Samson. A messed up guy like Samson. Eh? And he fully anointed him. And dealt with him. Hallelujah. Samson. So you know the first person. Then he dealt with David, who went and killed his friend to take his wife. And you think he's surprised by you? Some of oh God, I don't think whether you've ever dealt with someone. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me tell you, eh? Elijah, do you know how Elijah was? That's what the scripture says. Elijah was a man with like passions as we. It says, and yet, he did what he did. He stopped the rain, and he let it rain, and he called down flames. Let me tell you, you don't surprise God. You, see, you, you, think, you think you're too imperfect for him? You know, he has given you his name. So, after, after all, you, your name doesn't matter, it's him. Hallelujah! So, don't let the devil disqualify you. I'm telling you. Everything that God has for you, He's willingly and lovingly bestowing it upon you from glory to glory. He has prepared stuff for you. Not because of you, but because you bear His name. I'm telling you. 
Another one, I'm telling you. That's where now the devil runs. He has no defense. He cannot attack you when you know that. John chapter 9, verse 8. The neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen you. <laughs> okay. Had seen him that was blind. Said, is not this he that sat and begged? So isn't, isn't this? <laughs> what has happened now? Now, when you go from blind to seeing, that's a change of levels. This is a person. Can you imagine the hospital that now knows you every detail about you? And one time the doctor is passing by a certain gym and they see you. I've been waiting for you for months. What is happening? What is happening? Hallelujah. I'm telling you. And then there are those devils that wait for you after certain months with prescriptions because they know they have a package of disease for you after certain months. <laughs> So when sometime uh, they drop the package, hallelujah, and then you pay them the money to treat it. <laughs> and then this time they wait and wait and something has happened. Something has happened to you. Your life has changed. Hallelujah. No more sickness. No more disease. No more weakness. I'm telling you. It has dropped. You're now strong. Every bit of your being functions perfectly. Now, when I just said that, there's an action of healing that spread. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Hallelujah! And let me tell you, it is working, working, working. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This is not this he that sat and begged. Let's read so fast. Some said, this is he. Others said, no, he's like him. See how people don't want to accept when things happen? They try to find some kind of reason. Others said, he's like him. But for him, he had his own testimony, yeah? But he said, I am the one, I am he. Can you imagine? Can you imagine your stage to change until the people who knew you think you only resemble you? They're seeing you in a certain huge car. And they're saying, eh, that one looks like they're not saying that that is the person. They're saying, he looks like, hallelujah. Something has changed. You look like, but something. No, 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 I don't think. That is what the blessing of God does. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 10. Therefore said they unto him, how are your eyes open? Then he said, you see, there's an optician. That side of Nakasero. You know Nakasero? You know. <laughs> now, when that question is what messes up so many people, because now people find it hard to give credit to the gospel, they will find something, especially if the one asking them is a person whom they esteem above the anointing, they will not do it. And let me tell you, if you're in those places by the anointing and you behave like that, the anointing will be ashamed of you at some point. And you know when the anointing becomes ashamed of you, eh? you become an embarrassment. And then you will come and then we will pray for you again because we are gracious. 
hoping you have learned a lesson. Eh? He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus. No mincing words. Hallelujah. 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 Can you imagine a time comes, and I'm saying in the church, where people acknowledge that there's nothing that they can have or get, but only and only, only, only Him. That the world can give you nothing. It is Him. He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes. You see, this is foolish, eh? Said an optician kind of made a diagnosis. Now that is, oh, okay. I, I, I want to find that clinic also. Eh? <laughs> a man that you called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me. Now wait for those things here. We have come to make less and less and less sense to the world and to the workings of the empirical. I'm telling you, and that will be your testimony. A man that is called Jesus anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received sight. So it was as simple as that. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I don't even know. <laughs> Verse 13. They brought to him the Pharisees. He said, okay, now I think eh, this thing here is spiritual. And the guys who need to examine it are the guys with, uh, with theology now. Eh? You see, eh? they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes and I washed and I seen, I now see. Tell us, <laughs> Verse 16. They have also said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God. We have told you, first we know cults and those who are of God. But now the way in our council here, this man here is not of God. We are telling you. <laughs> they have also said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God. That's how they start discrediting what is blessing you. Hallelujah. Because they know where your blessing is coming from. Where you're going to magnify God, to glorify God through a man. And so they will target that man through whom you are glorifying God. And they know once they strike the shepherd, the sheep will flee. And that's the tactic that has been used for ages. Say, so this man is a cult. This man is not of God because he keepeth not a Sabbath. Have you ever seen them on Sunday on Zoe grounds? <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So what is special about Tuesday? <laughs> Hallelujah! This man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? We know this guy. He's messed up. Hallelujah. Haven't you read the tabloids? <laughs> now let me tell you. If the reputation of Jesus can be messed up before men like this, how about you? If you think Jesus, 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 son of God, the son of God, his reputation before men 
can be, this guy is, is messed up. He's a sinner. Why, why do you feel offended? When they call you names and they, you know, misrepresent you. Jesus. That was his reputation. Anyway. Allah said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? He says, and there was division among, and some were saying, no. Others were saying, yes. <laughs> so there was division anyway. Verse 17. They say unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him? You tell us again. Tell us again. <laughs> you know what? Something disturbs people. Eh? It has really disturbed them. They'll keep calling you. They'll keep trying to taunt you. To, they'll keep. You just know it's, it's messing them up. <laughs> because you see, it's never again. Because they have not seen it. They do not know it. It's because they have taken a sight. And that's it. That's what it's always. Never be deceived into thinking it's because they have not seen it or they don't believe it. They believe it, but they have taken a side. They are their father, the devil, and that's it. Anyway, they say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he has opened your eyes? He said, He's a prophet. <laughs> you know, there are things which happen, and you just can't argue against them. If the man is prophesying and the things are coming to pass, what can we call him? A doctor? A lawyer? <laughs> Hallelujah. There are certain descriptions of a prophet that you can't hide away from. You can talk and talk, but the signs are there. The credentials are there. So now you, they can't deal with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind. He said, no, 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 no. But if we examine this thing very well. <laughs> now you are into the world of secularism. You know the devil has different fronts. Different fronts of assault and of bondage. One of it is academics and in secularism. It says, who the God of this world has blinded. Hallelujah. So spiritual blindness is his ultimate goal. Now, the main thing, whether he comes through witchcraft, or satanism, or secularism, the goal is the end, to blind. So he will use, confu now here he was using secularism to confuse. Let's, let's really, this thing, you know, this thing, I don't get it very well here. <laughs> but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and tried to explain. Say, no, no, no. If you saw his eyes well, <laughs> he, they were small, but he was seeing. <laughs> he was somehow, somehow. Yeah, you, you look and see. There was somehow. And let me tell you. Some of you are going to find yourself like that because we are going to cure the blind here more and more. I'm telling you. And if it messes you up, it's, going, it's really, really, really going to mess you up. Eh? <laughs> You'll say, you know, I think they somehow could walk. <laughs> but the Jews did not believe him, concerning him, that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that received the... It had become an issue. I said, now let's call your parents now here. <laughs> now, why bother? Why don't you just dismiss it if it's nothing to you? So they called the parents. And they asked them, saying, is this your son? <laughs> Who you say was born blind? Eh? How then does he now, why is he now seeing? You are saying he was born blind. Uh -huh. You tell us why is he seeing now. <laughs> His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son. We know this is our son. Eh? And that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees? We do not know. So don't put us in those remnant things now. <laughs> Oh, who has opened his eyes? We don't know that one. We know not. 
He's of age. You talk to him. You leave us alone out of these things here. He shall speak for himself. Verse 22. This word spake his parents because they feared the Jews. <laughs> for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of synagogues. There's already an agreement. That when you acknowledge these things here, you're a cult. And this intimidated so many people. The parents seeing something, they could not acknowledge. They could not go on the side of the man and acknowledge the miracle. Can you imagine? There are people like that. They can see what has happened. But because they are afraid of society, they are ashamed of the gospel. And they would rather take this, that other side. Hallelujah. Therefore said his parents, he's of age ask him. Then again called they the, the, the man that was blind and said unto him, Aha, uh -huh. now okay, yes, we can see it's a miracle, but you give God the uh, praise. This man here, here is a sinner. It's God. It's Godi, Godi. <laughs> you don't like praising a man, praise. It is God. This one here, we do. It's God, God. Why don't you say God? Have you encountered the same spirit around? These things don't just start now. Because they know that God, God is not going to just come in the air. And so you will see less and less of him if a man is not anointed to walk in power and grace. And so when you discredit man and all start pointing God, 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 they have already started killing undermining the glory of God because the glory of God operates through a man. So that the, the end again is to undermine undermine the glory of God. Now you see? Same religious spirit. For us it is God not a man. God Ruhanga Hallelujah. So, give God the praise. We know that this man, this man here, we know him. We know him. <laughs> it's as if they had already seen Jesus doing some stuff, you know. Eh? Say, so we know him. As if they, they used to hang out with him. Eh? <laughs> you know, they speak like they actually know him. Eh? We know him as a sinner. Anyway, he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or not, for me, don't put me in those theological things. Eh? I don't know. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And that is what we are all concerned about the transformation. Hallelujah! So you can go with your debates and you know for us we know these are things that we are before us. We know God spoke and the thing happened. We know I was in this state and now I'm in another state. That is all that we care about. Happening now at Zoe Grounds every Tuesday 5.30 p.m. at Plot 47 Chigolweza, Kampala, Uganda along the Entebbe Express Highway. For those flying in Contact our public relations desk by emailing pr at prophetelvis.com.